John Hall of Orleans talks about two of their biggest hits, Still the One, and Dance With Me. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. Still the One and Dance With Me. Any interesting stories you can tell me about each one of those songs? Yeah, uh, Still the One was written, written because uh, uh, our neighbor downstairs in uh, our apartment building in the Lower East Side of Manhattan uh, was divorcing her husband and asked Johanna if she could write a song or we could write a song about people st playing, uh, staying together because there were so many songs about people breaking up. And um, so Johanna gave me the entire lyric for Still the One on the back of an envelope and said, you think you could do anything with this? And I wrote the music in about 15 minutes. And uh, <clears throat> amazingly enough, we didn't know at the time what a big hit it was going to be. And the, neither did the label. There was a debate about which song from that record should be the first single. But but it wound up being the one. And unfortunately, uh, uh, that was the choice. The lady did know that was like you present what you do. You Did you tell her that? Did she see? see oh, I'm sure she knew. I, I I don't know whether Johanna wrote her back or uh, you know. I mean, it probably took. We moved out of that apartment building, and we're no longer her her upstairs neighbors, uh, and and kind of lost track of her. But I think she and Johanna were in touch by by mail or email, and that wasn't email back then. It was probably just a postcard or something. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm I'm betting that Johanna told her, but I honestly don't know. Well, she, she probably heard it and, and knew. He at least planted the seed. <laughs> there you go. He did. With Dance With Me, I was sitting in the living room of our house playing acoustic guitar on a, a Sunday morning with the sunshine coming in and all that. I was just playing in this, this detuning uh, progression. I just was fooling around with the guitar and wound up... Uh, and wound up... Uh, Playing that chord, da 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 etc. And Johanna from the kitchen called in. Sounds like dance with me. I want to, and I went. Can we think of something more original than that? And she said, "I really sounds like dance with me." And I and I was like, "Okay." And uh, we were able to come up with the first verse and then we're, she hit a writer's block and I was like, not sure it should be dance with me anyway. And we were driving, a, you know, a couple of months later, we we're driving back from an Orleans show in Ithaca, New York, back to Woodstock. And uh, I'm in the driver's seat and she's in the passenger seat and she says, pick the beat up and kick your feet up. And I was, and she starts scribbling on an envelope again. And by the time we got home, the song was finished. It's just, you know, you don't know how these things can happen. Sometimes it's the lyrics first. Sometimes it's music first. Sometimes it's a collaboration. Sometimes it's one time, you know, one person doing most of it uh, or doing just lyrics. It, it can be all different ways. And, and uh, it's good to be flexible. I lost my little brother, uh, Jerry, the priest, and my older brother, Jim, and then my dad, and then my mom in a three and a half year period starting in 2009. And it's, it's, it's a, an experience, you know, and it's, it really, uh, in a way it was maybe it was good. Cause I got to go through all that grief at once, yeah. but, uh, it's heavy, you know, and, uh, my friend, John Paul, uh, you know, the song mystic blue on this record, the, the third track on the record is, uh, is about, I wrote it with him the night after her funeral. I knew the two of them for 35 years and I was driving from the mid Hudson Valley of New York down to Nashville to, uh, say goodbye to her. I knew she was in hospice and, and I, I didn't make it. She died while I was driving. And, but I got there and I was with him for the visitation and the funeral. And then after the funeral, the night, the next night we wrote this song and, you know, alone too long was basically, you know, somebody said that to him when he was wondering, you know, when he could start dating again. And, uh, and there are songs like through this, right? Every song really comes from a, an experience, a life experience. And uh, and I think that uh, every this song, song by the way is gorgeous. I love that song. Oh, thank you. And Dan Dugmore played steel guitar, and that he's a legend in the steel guitar community, which there actually is one of those. And um, he played the the steel solo on Linda Ronstadt's "Blue Bayou," which is like one of the most famous steel guitar solos ever. And uh, and he played all over the uh, many records in between, but all over the Casey Musgraves 
Golden Hour record that was her biggest record and, and won not just country awards, but Grammy awards uh, and crossed over to pop radio. And, and I used to hear that record in the, and his steel guitar in the, in the vegetable aisle at the supermarket uh, a lot, which is one of the things I say to Bonnie Ray when I talk to her is like, I heard you singing in the vegetable aisle this morning, but, uh, but anyway, yeah, that's, uh, every song is a topical song. And people say to me, well, you know, welcome home. That's a really good message song about veterans, you know, and I go, well, yeah, it is. Or they say about World on Fire, it's, you know, or uh, Save the Monarch or Power, which everybody, you know, most people know from, uh, and it seems even more timely now because uh, Give Me the Warm Power of the Sun, the Steady Flow of the Waterfall. I mean, it's about hydroelectric power and wind power and solar power, but put in as musical and poetic a way as I could. Um, they're all topical songs, even if you're singing Dance With Me. You're talking to someone you love and saying, come on, let me hold you and let's move with this music. That's a message. That's a topic. It's all topical. So um, uh, the way I look at songwriting is it can come from anywhere. It can come from, you know, uh, seeing a sign as you're driving down the road or reading an article in the newspaper. Or it come from here, overhearing somebody at the next table in a restaurant. Somebody's in the middle of a conversation. You hear a line and go, hmm, that could be a song. Well, like and, trying uh, to learn patience and then get getting into a traffic jam, like with right. <laughs> with the bluesy lessons, you know, that that, that yeah. that's another one of my favorites. Well, good. Thanks. That was Johanna and me and Joan L. Mosser who wrote that. And uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's true that there are a lot of lessons in life and that song talks about them. But every one of these songs came out of some kind of lesson uh, that that came by, you know, impacted me. Oh, I like the world on fire kind of has a reggae feel to it. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. And we saw, it's also, uh, you know, it was, it was, it's just another song to the creator, yeah. uh, as yeah. they call it, you know, in the Rasta, uh, society in Jamaica, it's, it's Ja, which is actually a, uh, permutation of Yahweh, which is the, of course, Hebrew God for God, one of the names for God. And, uh, but, uh, and Bob Marley sang lots of songs about, you know, or to Ja, but, uh, but anyway, so yeah, that's a song that uh, is about communication as well as being about the environment and about, it was, we started it during the wildfires in Australia when the kangaroos and wallabies and, and koalas were threatened and, and many of them unfortunately died from that, those fires and uh, finished it when the fires were going nuts in California. And uh, it's just, uh, let's hope we don't have another fire season like that, although it's predicted to be another bad one. But the song really, it, it's a bit much about uh, John Paul, who collaborated on that with me also. Uh, John Paul Daniels said uh, he wanted to be about spiritual growth and communication. And, and there is a reference in there to the Tower of Babel and uh, people talking past each other. Uh, uh, let's talk to each other if we still remember how which I think is applicable to today's political scene and to not just interpersonal communication, but societal, inter, international, talking to other countries and being able to actually hear each other as opposed to, you know, uh, here's our position and that's that. Yeah. And um, so we all could use a dose of better communication. And, and, um, and it also, the second verse talks specifically about the fires Talk about th a thousand mil million creatures' lives destroyed. Talk about destruction. There's too much to grieve. World on fire. Uh, it's a, uh, you know, another, I, as I say, it's like songs that are written because something was happening that I felt strongly enough about that, uh, that I wanted to write about it and sing about it. Reclaiming My Time is the brand new album from John Hall. There'll be links in the description of this video where you can pick up the album. Make sure you comment on our video, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. And we don't say this enough, buy a t-shirt, help support our channel. We really appreciate it when you basically wear our emblem proudly. There are many different uh, t-shirt sizes, many different uh, styles. You can pick them all up. Links in the description. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music.